Hi, I'm Peter Rennie, and I'm just going to take you through Brexit, Britain's exit from the European Union. So, um, basically the referendum was held, and um, as part of Dave Cameron's election promises, he promised to hold um, a referendum on Britain leaving the EU. So he, but he mainly thought that it was going to just silence the aspects of his own party, and he didn't believe that it would actually succeed. Um, certain other members of um, the UK were ha also happy the referendum was held and um, other uh, political groups um, but his own motivation was just to silence um, members of his own party. Um, it was held on the 23rd of June 2016 um, and it succeeded with a 51.9% majority. A uh, worldwide shock was felt in the stock exchange as a result um, and Britain um, triggered Article um, 50 on the 29th of March um, 2017. Um, John Curtis um, coined the term Euroscepticism. This basically was meaning that people were um, getting sick of Europe's control of the UK um, and this, he coined this term at the time of Brexit. Um, for workers, uh, Brexit meant um, that uh, when Britain would leave the EU, um, the free transfer of workers within um, the country was going to be affected, so this was straight away going to impact on international workers. Uh, reasons for leaving. Um, there were three main reasons. Um, sovereignty, um, so control of um, Britain's own money um, was 49% um, of uh, people's reasons. Um, immigration was uh, 33%, so this was um, people were um, noticing an influx of um, immigrants into the country um, and a lot of people uh, weren't happy with it and they wished for the UK to take back its own borders. And the age of voters, um, basically 90% um, of over 65 year olds voted, whereas only 64% um, of 18 to 24 year olds voted. So as a result you ended up with a much older voting um, demographic. Um, the older group, um, Matthew Goodwin and Rob Ford coined the term and the left behind, the older white conservative group, and basically they, they had been left behind, the needs of others were met as what they would have felt themselves and before them and that they no longer had a stake in how it's saying how Britain was run. And so basically the increase of migrants and people weren't really happy about how they were coming into the country. Now this wasn't really international workers as such and it was more the, even the migrant crisis in France had brought it to and um, with the migration of people coming from France was the main reasons and um, obviously they were coming from further afield and then crossing into England through France. Um, the immediate aftermath of the vote and um, the sterling was at its weakest point um, in the stock exchanges since 1985. This is key as international workers um, are going to be often paid in sterling so it's not as appealing to come to a country where um, the currency is at a low value um, in proportion to your own currency therefore you're going to be making less money so for international workers this will be um, a major point and um, David Cameron stepped down as Prime Minister and he, as he was supporting the um, state vote he felt his position was untenable so he left um, American markets closed 3% following the day of the announcement. So basically, the US had a lot of invested interests. A lot of multinationals um, and other companies are invested in the UK, or they may be American countries that are exporting into the UK. And um, they would be highly affected um, by any major change such as this in um, the UK. So um, that's also going to affect their workers that are in that country as well and if the company's performance isn't going as well um, obviously their workers are going to suffer as well. A major factor was um, the UK losing its AAA rating for credit so it's now more expensive for the UK to borrow money so anything linked with the UK's um, domestic market they're now going to um, have a more expensive um, cost on uh, borrowing money so every time that they take out a loan um, as a country it's going to cost them more. Um, so leaving Europe and um, the world's largest market, Britain were the second largest um, player um, in the um, market so Germany were the biggest country and then uh, the UK were second. Um, now there's implications for both Europe and Britain going forward out of this. Obviously Europe are losing their second biggest um, country 
So obviously that's going to um, affect the strength of their single market. They're going to lose a, a large proportion of their market um, space. Um, complications then for the UK, obviously they're losing access to all the other countries, um, so they will no longer have um, tariff-free or say tax-free um, transfer of goods and services um, throughout the EU. And um, this is key because if you have workers now um, based in, the, um, in England, you can no longer transfer them throughout Europe to work. Um, so for multinationals um, and foreign direct investment, uh, the UK will no longer be seen as an ideal country to be setting up in. Um, they may look at countries like Ireland, um, that is close to um, the US, and it can also be used as a stepping stone into Europe. Um, London as a financial sector, and um, the major strength um, again, for the financial sector in London, is that it's a stepping stone into the um, EU for many companies. Um, so, without, um, without being a member of the EU, it loses many of these benefits. Now, it still has its key competencies, but um, without being a member of the EU, it's not as, it's not as strong a position. Um, the immigration um, and visas are also, uh, the tightening of borders is also going to affect the London financial sector as they like, like to bring in lots of expertise from abroad and um, often they bring in Middle Eastern um, expertise as well so um, in particular markets they will have the best knowledge so they bring them in to work in the area so without being able to bring them in easily it's going to affect them as well. Uh, many international companies have um, moved their um, their um, meetings out of the UK and as a, as, and it also has happened in America to an extent that they've had to move um, meetings um, to uh, make it easier for people to get into the country. So some countries now in the US especially um, are unable to travel into the US un unhindered so it, it makes more sense to have them in a, a country with easier um, immigration laws. Um, so the long term effect um, uncertainty and um, a key issue for Brexit, will it actually take place? So obviously there's um, a couple of U-turns that can be taken and um, it's the uncertainty of will it actually happen and trying to plan for the future is what's going to affect many um, countries. Foreign direct investment um, for the financial sector in the UK is worth 45%. So trying to plan and whether you're going to give, whether companies are going to give this same amount of money again. Um, without knowing the outcome of Brexit yet fully and um, they're, they're going to be slow to kind of invest um, and continue to invest within the country. Um, then um, establishment of tariffs, what sort of a deal is going to be done with the EU, how easy are workers going to be able to transfer and goods be able to transfer throughout the um, EU from the UK. Um, then individual um, businesses, how are they going to react to Brexit? Are they going to um, stay where they are, are they going to move, um, like each business will probably be given um, the nature of their business is going to be different um, and obviously that means that their workers are going to be affected in a, in a different way as well. Um, the financial markets, um, will they stabilise um, and come back to the level that they were at or at what way will it go? So currency again, we, as we mentioned earlier, is a huge factor for um, international workers. Um, Northern Ireland and Scotland would both have um, probably end up having um, votes on whether to de, de evolutionise so that they'd leave the um, UK and set up themselves so that maybe that they would um, opt to join the EU themselves and um, because the benefits that a lot of the grants that a lot of them, those um, areas would get um, would, be, would no longer be in place when they would leave the EU. Um, it could also destabilise um, the peace process in Northern Ireland. So this would obviously make um, Northern Ireland a, a more hostile place and would not be a place that international workers would wish to travel to. Um, so obviously then you would have um, reduced um, investment in that area. Um, so this is just a bibliography. Um, I'd just like to thank you very much um, for um, listening to our presentation. I'd just like to conclude by saying that we think that um, the economy is moving away from globalisation towards um, localisation um, and I just open the floor for questions.